Good evening and welcome. Our meeting will now come to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and of the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a moment of silence for our uh, men and women uh, in the armed forces abroad and at home. For our police and firefighters who protect us in our community. For first, what is it, our first responders uh, who have been working and putting their life in jeopardy really since the very beginning of our experience with the pandemic. And for those who have been afflicted with it, we have a moment of silence. Thank you. And now we will move to comments by department heads. And we'll begin with Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have nothing on the agenda. I'd just like to uh, let us know something we had a few weeks ago. Just uh, even though we got warm quick and the uh, ice melted, we'd like to remind all residents and business owners that they have to shovel their walks and sidewalks uh, in their front of the houses and adjacent if they have a side property. Uh, it's very important. Uh, it's not only for uh, uh, kids going to school, uh, people running or walking, also if uh, somebody's responding to a call. And please uh, put a fire bomb and shovel out the fire hydrant. So I have next. Okay. Let's see. Next would be uh, Chief Stristow. Hey, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. I have nothing on the agenda. Just to follow up on uh, Christian Jackson's comment about the fire hydrants, mm -hmm. just to remind residents it's their responsibility to shovel out the hydrant that's in front of the house from snow. It makes our job a little bit easier and faster to find the hydrant and to connect up the hydrant if someone shovels, shovels it out for us. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. said that uh, when we reached the uh, beginning of January, wasn't it, that we would uh, dispose of the um, deeds and so forth that you had, or records that you had on each house. What, where are we with that? That's the extension, Madam Mayor. We extended it to March 31st right now. All right. So we did extend that to March 31st. Okay, I think that's a good idea. All right, then you would have to move along, and who would it be? I, is there? This is Bloom. Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so tonight on the agenda, I'll be uh, going over item number three, the funding bond resolution. Um, as you know, we will be issuing bonds and bans uh, in the next few weeks. And in the, as part of that process, we uh, reach out to our fiscal advisor uh, to, for them to take a look at our existing bonds and determine whether uh, there is value in refunding any existing bonds given the current low interest market rate. Um, so they did take a look at it and based off of their analysis, they determined that there is one bond that we have outstanding. It was a bond that was issued in 2010 for various village improvements. Uh, which, in, which is both for the village, uh, the general fund and the water fund. Um, and they determined that the remaining um, outstanding debt on that bond, which is for the next five years, about $1.5 million, 
there is value <coughs> in funding that. There would be a small net savings to the village of about forty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that forty-five thousand dollars is net of costs. <coughs> Refunding bonds entails a, a more detailed process. Uh, we have to set up an escrow account in the bank. Um, we also have to hire an independent accounting firm uh, as a verification agent. Um, but those costs would be covered, and the net savings to the village would be about the forty-five thousand dollars. In the event that uh, interest rates would um, decrease in the next, or go up rather, in the next few weeks, because the refunding uh, financing plan that was established was as of a point in time, um, in the event those interest rates go up and it's no longer cost beneficial for the village to refund those bonds, then we would just simply cancel those bonds. The item on the agenda tonight is for the board to approve the plan to move forward with refunding. But of course, you know, at the time we go out to market, if, if uh, factors change and we no longer deem it necessary, we will not issue uh, the refunding. Um, the reason we do this when we go out to issue a bond, it's more efficient, it's cost efficient um, to, you know, we're out in the market anyway issuing new bonds. So we take a look at our old bonds and it, uh, you know, it reduces some of the costs. For example, we have to go out and uh, um, get a ratings from Moody's. You know, that's one of the things we have to do with this as well. Um, we have to issue a POS. We have to, you know, do all, you know, all sorts of things. Um, issuing this refunding would, you know, take care of. Uh, it would be efficient to do it while we issue new bonds at the same time. But again, again, this item on the agenda is for the board just to approve us to move forward. Mm -hmm. This is the last question. Yes. So we're, we're this, this five years left on this bond? Correct. So we would issue a five-year a five bond? Correct. Okay. Yes. Very interesting. Thank you. May I just have one comment before we move past Mrs. Wu? Uh, the village going said he was notified that Mrs. Wu had attained the credentialed municipal finance officer CMFO designation by the New York State Society of Municipal Officers. They stated in their email that it was their pleasure to inform Mrs. Wu that she had qualified for this designation. This designation is a declaration that Mrs. Wu is proficient in her position and that she has demonstrated a mastery of skills critical to succeed as a well-respected municipal finance officer. Congratulations. Very good. What I understand is it's not a designation that you give out easily. So thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. All right, I think that uh, we'll call. Cool. Yes. Cool, are you with us? I am, Mayor. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, we have uh, nothing for recreation on the agenda tonight, uh, but one sick leave employee who we hope is going to be coming back next Monday. And on a personal note, I would like to thank the board and all of my coworkers for their support and assistance over the last few weeks. I'm getting close and looking forward to coming back on a more regular schedule in the very near future. Did you have Paul? Uh, Mayor, can yes. you hear me? Yeah, nothing, nothing on the agenda tonight, but sick leave for one employee who we hope will be back next week. And I just wanted to thank the board and all my coworkers for their support and their assistance over the last few weeks. Uh, looking forward to getting back to a more regular schedule in the very near future. Very good. And we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right. So hey, hey, Paul, I'm sorry. Well, I have a quick question. How, how are we doing on the on the stump removals from uh, from the storms? I mean, I still see quite a few around the village. Uh, are we we are issuing. We we have worked on on the medium sized stumps ourselves. Harder is coming in on a uh, daily basis. Uh, hopefully, early next week. We've had uh, some scheduling issues, but Harder will be coming in to take out the large stumps. We've engaged them on a purchase order, and they should be in next week. And, and this is when, in this case, we would get reimbursement for being on this as well. Would we apply for being reimbursement? Yes, we have already submitted an initial um, statement of expenditures um, to FEMA, um, which included, for the most well, part. This is when we need the microphone. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
sorry. Yeah, so we have already submitted um, a statement of ex estimated expenditures to FEMA. They're in the process of reviewing that, and they will actually uh, be uh, notifying us when they will be coming to the village to do either a site inspection or remotely. But um, we have given them estimated costs, including all the, the stumps that need to be removed. All right, any other questions? All right, so then we'll move ahead. And where's the, oh, Wait, go ahead. On the agenda tonight, I have five transfers. I have four controls. Transfer 2A is to provide funding for Anchor Electric for work above and beyond the lighting maintenance contract. Uh, with the TSCG project came through the town to end of December 8th, we had a great need for markouts, the 811 markouts, and uh, we're overextended here. After discussing this with Don Sanka, we felt that now the project's ended, that $40,000 will cover uh, us through the end of May. Uh, the second item is $7,600 to fund two additional blocks of billable hours through the end of this fiscal year for our big IT partner, Total Technology Solutions. Uh, they bill us in 20 hour blocks at 185 and a half for $3,700. We have a current bill, we were shy a couple hundred dollars. That's why it's 76 instead of 74. Item C and D, the water department maintenance equipment and plant lines are very low, and we use these often, especially now with the tank offline and the, the system operating off system pressure. The equipment is under a lot more stress, and we, 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 we've been uh, relying on our emergency vendors a lot, so I just want to put some money from the water contingent line into these two lines. And the last one is a transfer to fully fund an award to H2M for GIS related services. The budget line for this was under budgeted uh, this year, so this makes it whole. Uh, they're doing more for us now. Uh, item number six, this is a housekeeping item. We have a uh, consulting relationship with, uh, 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 for our water department. This is the individual who holds our 1D license, which is required under New York State law. Uh, there's no increase associated with this. This is really a contractual language correction. Uh, in the old contract, this individual reported to the superintendent of buildings. It's now reported to the superintendent of public works. And although the language of the contract allowed for hours to be signed by the superintendent, it only listed eight hours, but this person regularly works 18 hours. The order is thought it would be better to just change that. So this is totally housekeeping law. Item number seven, uh, we have a, uh, a permit that expired with the, uh, for the Mall Spiel at RDBWR. Uh, New York State DEC requires us to renew that permit. That expired in July. Uh, we reached out to them. I found out about this in November. I reached out to them. Uh, we are on a real time crunch here. I reached out to the Barker and Berlucci. They are an engineering firm, but they are well known for their environmental work. Uh, we could reach out to them. This proposal is for them to uh, perform, uh, uh, engage us with a mid application form, the record of compliance form, the update, update an engineering report, the facility manual, and any maps and plans. Uh, that's for about $24,000, but yes, the proposal is for $40,000 because it includes an anticipated need for a $15,000 survey by a New York State licensed survey for preparation of a new site survey in the event, in the, event the old three-dimensional survey they have on record is not uh, acceptable to the DEC. They might be looking for topographical work, so we, we included it now that we come back to the board. Uh, item number eight. At the December 10th Traffic Commission meeting, the four member trustees unanimously voted uh, to request that a traffic study be conducted on Cathedral Avenue. Uh, there's a presentation by uh, Frank Bissolato uh, from Creighton Manning. He did a really good job of explaining uh, the research he's done for the last few years. It's primarily funded, funded by residents, I believe. Um, so I reached out to him for a, a proposal. Having seen that proposal and its professional service, I did some due diligence at the, at the request of Chairman Nuno, and I reached out to five other engineering firms. Uh, all the other engineering firms came in uh, either at oh, 67,000, this is for 47.5, one on the other side. They were either 67, 87, or over $100,000. One did not reply because of a conflict, and another did not respond. So uh, that's on the agenda for this evening, it is for a traffic army study, or what they also call a road die, people have been. It is also written such that it will be accepted in its entirety by Nassau County as complete. So we won't have to go back a second time mm -hmm. to uh, uh, leave here to uh, respond to any that same issue. Item number nine. This is a change order to place two village of Royce welcome signs. Uh, 
the, we had a sign that was moved from New High Park when the construction started with the third track. That sign went over to the Garden City uh, train station because that would have been damaged uh, beyond repair. So we had to put there, but uh, recently we, uh, we re realized we need two new signs, one for New High Park and one for Garden City. The one that was moved around is not very good condition, not very mm -hmm. And the last item is for uh, our municipal solid waste disposal with Covanta. Covanta contract expired in May 2020. We put out a request for proposal. We received two uh, people responding. Uh, Director Guadalucci, again, the environmental engineering firm, uh, they reviewed the entire contract. Myself and Mr. Sanko, and uh, I believe Mike Banta from Sanitation reviewed the two documents as well. And we asked questions and made comments. And upon that, uh, received our comments and questions. Uh, B&B recommended Covanta. Uh, we are currently paying a rate of about, as of January 1st, of 79.49. The new rate for 2021 will be 84.53. That includes the uh, adjustment that was made January 1st. Okay. That's all I have, Mayor. Unless there's any questions. Trustee Delaney. Ralph, two questions. Um, the DAK service agreement, that's for the water department. They, they do work with the water department, right? Yes. The, uh, the, the person that works there is a, a gentleman who's been in business over 40 years. Right, right. But my question is, we had some vacancies over there. Have we looked into getting, uh, are we anywhere near getting uh, those vacancies? Uh, yes. Uh, in, in early November, uh, um, in cooperation with HR and Courtney Rosenblatt, we put out the CS4s for jobs for uh, two trainees and two water plant operators. Uh, we received applications uh, for people we could reach on the civil service list. Those candidates were interviewed by myself and two water plant operators in the water department. We made job offers, uh, three job offers. Uh, one was accepted the training position, the other trainee turned it down uh, because of the, uh, he would have to take a cut in income, and the water plant operator turned it down. He didn't sit, uh, simply why, but uh, he was expecting a much higher salary than being offered. We think he was just too senior for the position. Uh, for a starting salary. So we, we have one successful hire. Now with those uh, people turning down, uh, HR can go to the civil service list and proceed down the list to the next candidates. Is that correct? Yeah, no. Uh, uh, we, we made progress, but we're not there yet. Okay, but obviously as we go through the list, maybe we should start thinking about if we run into the problem with the water plant operator as far as, I've heard this, be, I think I've heard this before, as far as uh, salary goes, maybe we have to re rethink the salary on that. Um, my second question is with regard to the traffic study, yes, number eight, um, that uh, amount of money, that $47,000 is for going forward. Just to clarify, it's not for any work that has was done by the residents in the past, correct? No. Just trying to make sure with that that expense was carried by someone else. This right. Okay. I just want to make sure that's yes. it's clear. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Well, if I have a couple questions. Yes. Sir. The forty grand for uh, anchor in two A. Can you run through that again with me? Did I hear you correctly? Is it because of the natural the gas lines being? It's it's. I spoke to the village engineer a couple of times on this. Uh, the we have a we have a maintenance contract for with Anchor for our street lights, which is a different bu bu a bucket of money. But we also have other items that go beyond that maintenance fee. And one of the things we've been using for is markouts. Markouts are required by law, and if they expire, they expire for the ten days. You have to do them all over again. So we've had uh, I've asked multiple times since this is because we're doing a lot of markouts. I can only attribute it to. Uh, the PSCG project, because that was the one that was going through our roads and on our sidewalks, but it, it might also have some rollover to a little bit of the third track. It could also have some national grid uh, influence. The thing is that we owe the money. We just can't keep up with these markouts. We don't have the manpower uh, to do that. So we rely on, on, on Anchor Electric, and we, the budget just didn't have sufficient funds for the amount of work that was requested of the municipality this year. It's our responsibility to pay. Uh, I, Anticipating when I ask a question, I have not even uh, thought to approach PSCG to see if any of this is refundable. But right now we owe about seventeen thousand dollars on this, and it allows about twenty-three thousand dollars for any future work that might be needed. Okay, on the uh, compost facility, does the thirty-nine include? Is there a permit fee to Nassau County? 
Um, this, this is, I don't believe Nassau County is involved. This is totally New York State Department. No, I'm sorry, is there, there's a permit fee? Is a 39 include? No, this is totally, I don't know if there's any fee, like $1,000. I, okay. I, I don't have the application in front of me, but the, if it is, it's probably nominal. Because uh, we did something else recently uh, with the DEC, we had an $1,800 fee. So there could be another small fee attached to this I'm unaware of this time. This is really for engineering services. We did search our records for the last application, which was five years ago. It was a five-year permit, by the way. Uh, we couldn't find anything in our records as they stand right now. We actually did a fall request of the DEC. They don't have anything at all in their records. DMV, being around a long time, they have a 1991 application and some materials. So, uh, one of the materials they have is a map of the entire DPW yard, which shows the mulch field. However, it's a two-dimensional flat map, and uh, the application is looking for drainage flows and topographical uh, elevations. So, we're going to, um, uh, Frank DeVita, who is the person who will be doing this proposal, he said he'll try to submit the old map to try to avoid the new survey, but they may demand it. So that's why I had a rewrite the proposal uh, for 40000 If the board recalled about two, three weeks ago, I sent you one for 24-5, but I had it updated for tonight because of that one outstanding item we're not sure of. Okay. I mean, I would just comment that, you know, as we, as a board, have discussed before, another reason we should get rid of this facility, just empty it out as much as we can and then just have a year's worth of stuff and get rid of as much as we can. Because it just is going to keep adding to headache and headache and headache. Thank you. Ralph, I just have one quick question. Uh, I know that we're ordering the two new signs. Um, any idea approximately how long that it would take before they come in? No. Yeah. Okay. All right, we can possibly find out. Yeah, we can possibly find out, and because uh, I know that, that the people uh, that live up in uh, that area, um, they wanted to have an idea. So if you can possibly, when you find out, just talk to email after you. He's pretty quick. This this gentleman, uh, this Berkshire uh, Sean Shop, I think they call it. He's up in New Hampshire, or Vermont. He's an expert job, uh, and the signs are about four thousand piece, but they discount thirty percent because we bought. But it does a nice job and you can see by the signs. They all look they all look excellent. Yeah, like I said, just when you have an idea of what the time frame is. I appreciate it. Thanks. No other no further questions. Then I'm going to ask the trustees the trustees if they have any questions or comments that they'd like to present at this time. There, I would like to make a, ask a question. Yes. Um, I just wanted to know, I don't know if Commissioner Jackson can answer it or HR, uh, Mrs. Rosenblatt, have we heard anything about vaccinating our uh, first responders, our police and fire? I know vaccines are on um, the minds of everyone and I didn't know if we were able to get any information on how we are gonna go proceed doing that when the vaccine is in such short demand. Uh, trustee, uh, I can speak for the police department. Um, I've been working with Courtney on this. Um, we're, we're, there's a couple different fronts. Any first responder uh, can go on their own and apply. Many have. But we're working with Nassau County Police Department. And uh, as soon as they get openings, they call us uh, last minute. And we go down today. We get 12 um, okay. of our offices. So we seem to be moving forward. Uh, but, and some already have... Um, spots reserved in the next two months. Uh, but we, again, if the Nassau County comes through and gets us more spots, we can move them up. You know, I, I appreciate your answer. Um, BOCES put out a call to school nurses last Wednesday to come to Nassau Community College, and there was about 300 school nurses showed up. So I didn't know if we were getting in the queue and, and keeping track of who needs to go and when they need to go. Yes, we have a lieutenant that's uh, assigned to this, and we're doing that. Uh, at first, they didn't, uh, they couldn't guarantee us any spots, so we, we did. Uh, we went on the site and got a, and got a lot of reservations. But now they're coming through with some openings, and we we're uh, moving forward on that with the Nassau County Police. Right now, they're doing the police officers as sworn personnel, and hopefully, we, we can then parlay that into our uh, other personnel that we have. Okay, thank you, Trustee Williams and Mrs. Rosenblatt. Uh, the yeah. fire department is following a similar pattern of accessing vaccinations. They are currently also 
filing Nassau County as well as going online to the New York State COVID location at Jones Beach and signing up for that as well. Uh, there's lots of press related right now as in terms of how to get the vaccination uh, and where to go to get it. So all these are being followed. Thank you. Trustee Dorn. Uh, I sent some questions earlier for Paul. Paul, if you could run through them. One was sprinkler system at St. Paul's. The second one was uh, what are we doing to keep those turf fields uh, up to up to snuff? The uh, sprinkler system at St. Paul's has two controllers on it. One went bad last year and was replaced. And the vendor is recommending that we replace the other one this spring. It is functional, but it's getting up there in age, and the new controllers are more reliable, easier to program, and they can easier to troubleshoot problems with the heads and the rest of the systems. So they will be coming in in the spring before the season starts and replacing that second controller. In terms of the turf fields, we did have land tech on site in November to do some repairs on the multi-purpose field. We're having some issues with the orange lines coming up, just the orange ones, so go figure. And while they were there, we asked them to inspect all the fields. That time they recommended that we do a light grooming with our machine, and we top off the rubber infill. So our staff went and did that. The fields are currently in good condition. Lantec will be in three times, spring, summer, and fall, to do a deep grooming. And as I indicated, the Lantec representative, Jason, tends to pop in just look around and then shoot us a little email with any recommendation you may have. So we're staying on top of it. We want those fields to be in good shape. We want to get a good long lifespan out of them. And we're working closely with both land tech and field turf to make sure that we do that. Okay, and the third topic was, uh, are we, I guess we're looking at, the rec, the rec commission is looking at uh, some sort of system for access to fields and parks, like a either a, some kind of electronic or other system? I know there's a lot of issues, but we're looking at it or making some progress. We are. We've, uh, we've reached out to a couple of people. Um, first off was the Village of Floral Park, who's been using a park card system for several years, and they seem to have knocked out a lot of the problems and the bugs that you would normally expect. So we, we're taking a look at their <clears throat> system and their requirements. At the same time, we reached out to our software vendor, RecPro, to see if we can not only get a card system, which they certainly have available, because they do our swimming pool cards, but we also want to see if we can't transfer this into an app that can be used on cell phones. We want to try to make this as convenient and as easy for our residents as possible, and we know that kids tend to forget their library cards and their pool cards, but they always seem to have those cell phones with them. So if we can get this into an app-based application, uh, we're going to be a little bit ahead of the game. And finally, I need to get a call into Peter B, and I'm hoping to do that tomorrow or Tuesday to see what we may be able to do, given some of the constraints that have been placed on us in the past. We want to make sure that we get this right, and uh, we're going to go about it the right way. Great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any further questions, comments by trustees? Uh, I wanted to mention the annual report. I thought that everyone who worked on it did a very good job. It was very, very attractive, and I think uh, presented a very, very accurate and uh, meaningful uh, picture of our community. Uh, things do happen that are negative, like the pandemic, but there are a lot of other good things that happen too. So, well, Carissa, I know that Karen worked on, uh, on that, and um, some other people, and of course all the uh, executive staff put forth their part of the uh, annual report, and I thought that, uh, I was very pleased with it, I thought that everyone did a very good job. Thank you. All right, now we are going to move to citizens' comments on agenda items. There. All right. Carissa Giardino. <laughs> My name is up there. Um, are there anyone, any questions regarding the agenda items 
from our citizens, our residents. If so, speak up. Um, I, I, can, I can make a comment. It's Brian Marr. Can you give, um, your, can you give us your name and address? Sure. Brian Marr, M-A-H-E-R, uh, 33 Cathedral Avenue. Go ahead. And, yeah, just a quick comment. I wanted to uh, thank the board for taking the time to review and, and hopefully greenlight that uh, item agenda number eight for the completion of the traffic study on Cathedral Avenue. We, we had another accident yesterday, but, but more importantly, we know that CPOA is unanimously um, behind it and, and all the residents here are. So I just wanted to really thank, thank this group for, for putting this on the agenda and taking the time. Thank you. Next, next speaker. No one else this evening? All right, then we'll move on. I'd like to... Actually, I have a question. All right, come on. Uh, Walter McKenna, 67 Hilton. Uh, with regard to the traffic study and the amount that's being spent um, for Cathedral, as we've looked at issues in the past and we fixed one road and the problems moved to the other, does this study consider that or um, do future studies for the other so to say north-south roads have to be done to uh, mitigate any anything that moves from cathedral to another road sure hey walter how are you doing this is uh lewis Menino. we discussed this at length um frank is i believe on the phone but if he isn't i could at least start off the reply with this generally the volume of traffic you need for to talk about diversion for this type of mitigation is like twice the amount of traffic that we would see on cathedral. So in their, you know, in his professional opinion, that's not something, we're not creating a problem elsewhere with this solution. So um, Frank, I can't see your name up, I don't see Frank's name up there, but um, that is the, oh hey Frank, how are you? I, I hope I did a good job of explaining it, but if you want to add a little texture for Walter, that'd be great. Yes, thank you, uh, Board of Trustees, and everyone in attendance. Uh, my name is Frank Lincholto. I'm a professional engineer specializing in traffic engineering. And prepared the proposal that Mr. Swazi talked about earlier. And just to answer the gentleman's question, uh, basically, you know, road dots seek to calm traffic. And, 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 and by calming traffic, it, it really, the goal of it is to really ease traffic speeds and accidents on cathedral. And it's not intended to create or move the problem elsewhere. If, if that ends up happening, then, then we're, we're all wrong. And uh, the study um, that we're looking to do will, will prove that, that it will work. And I'm, I'm fairly confident at this point, just based on the three years of, of data that I've been looking at since I've been working on this project, um, that the levels of the traffic on Cathedral are, are not at the point where you'll start to peel off a significant amount of traffic onto other parallel roadways. Um, Lewis said it right, you're, you're, we're around about 11,500 vehicles per day on Cathedral. You start to see diversions when, when you approach 20,000. So Cathedral is really a great candidate for, for the type of thing that we're considering, and, and now we just have to do the engineering study to prove it to Nassau County because it is their road. Uh, thank you very much. Just a follow up. Is it possible that when that study is done and solutions are put in place that they could also be considered for other roads? You're absolutely right, uh, Walter. I, I think that this type of project is something that we commonly see in the Long Island. We see roadways with two lanes in each direction um, where you might not necessarily have the volume um, to warrant that amount of capacity. And so you get traffic speeds that are, are higher than you want. And so I think this is the type of study, if, if we're able to move through it successfully and, and the county uh, agrees with it and it's implemented and, and the residents um, embrace it, I think it could be replicated elsewhere throughout the village. There are a number of other roads. I have to get them close enough to really opine, but you have parallel roads of a similar type of nature, Washington being one of them, um, that, could be, that could be looked at and considered. Walter, hey, this is uh, Louis Menudo again. I, I think this could be a game changer for road safety in this village. I really do. And I, I'm holding out a lot of hope uh, for this study. 
because um, I've been able to see it firsthand as I've lived in this part of town and grew up here. The, the traffic uh, and the speeding and the accidents and overturning cars and um, things you never thought you'd see um, coming down these roads. It's, it's a major, major step in the right direction. Uh, no doubt. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your explanation. The next speaker. Guess we're going to move on. All right, so can I have a motion to approve minutes of December 10th, 2020? I'll make that motion. All right, uh, Trustee Menudo and a second, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Dolebrook. And all those in favor? Aye. Okay, and that was, uh, that, uh, was a unanimous success. Um, Trustee Foley? Yes? We couldn't record your vote, I don't think. We didn't see I you. said I. I said I, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this may be you had an experience. I did, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm on the other side, so I know. Okay. Um, all right, now we will, um, I wouldn't uh, approve the consent calendar at this point, would I? No, we do formal agenda. No, Mayor, if I may suggest yeah, a motion for okay. uh, a public hearing date on the first draft proposed local law concerning a prohibition against parking non-operational vehicles in a residential district. Right, and we will not be uh, discussing number two after we'll see. It is my understanding no, we'll we'll discuss discuss to discuss it. it. We'll discuss it, but not, not going to move it. Right. But okay. at this time, it would be appropriate to set a hearing date for the first local law. Right. <clears throat> so, did we want to have discussion yeah. prior, however? Um, Let's set the date, Mayor. Okay. Well, May I have a motion? Hold on. Do we, do we ask Peter, do we, do we have our comment? Can we make it now or once we open the. Uh, a comment on the draft would be appropriate now. Okay. Uh, however, uh, it would Guys, not you got to use the microphones. Yeah. Do we make comments now or wait till we open? When do we make a comment? Is comments that? now would be helpful to my office to further draft the local law, okay. but they will not be a part of the record for purposes of the public hearing, not until the public hearing date. Okay. I mean, I only have All right, one so comment. Yeah. Go ahead, Trustee Jones. Uh, one is just language. I think it's just language. Uh, in the first part where, end of the first paragraph, it says, be 90 days. I think you probably should say an aggregate of 90 days within any six month period. So it doesn't go month on, month off. Yeah. And then um, just, uh, this is more of a question. What do we do about setting the penalty? It's not in here. I can't hear. I didn't hear you. In other words, what's the penalty? What's the penalty? There's no penalties in this. There is a generic penalty section in the code, and I believe it is in um, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but there is a generic penalty section. Uh, so it did not have to be specifically included here unless we wish to vary from the generic penalty for any uh, residential parking violation. Well, I'm just concerned if the penalty is, you know, twenty-five dollars, it really is not going to do anything. So, uh, to me, I, I think the I, I will the, circulate the penalty to the board okay. uh, tomorrow. I, mean, I, I think the penalty should be one hundred fifty bucks for the first violation and three hundred bucks after that. Otherwise, people just ignore things. They'll pay the twenty-five bucks, and we have to waste uh, time with police going to ticket people. Very good, sir. Further comments. All right, so then may I ask for a motion to uh, pass the first situation? I'll, I'll make the motion to set the hearing date to February 4th, 2021. Yes. I'll second it. And a second? Yes. I'll second it. Uh, I think it's Trustee Delaney. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And that motion passed unanimously. All right, now I will call for the. Um, Consent calendar. Consent calendar. So, may I have No, I think we're going to talk about the other. The second. Oh, 
second one. Oh, I'm sorry. Second, so talk about it, not set a date. Because oh, I think there'll be a lot of changes. We're not setting a date on the second one, but there can be discussion. So do you want to begin it? No, we're going to set the date for the second one. No, no, no. There's too many changes. Right. Okay. I think there's too many changes for us to set a date. Okay. I mean, I just I have a, a bunch of changes I think we should consider, and obviously everybody can, should should and can comment. These are just my comments, but I, I think you know I think the goal was really to have a limited kind of uh, situation addressed where you know if somebody owns a let's say a, a plumbing business and they have a a van and they're parking it in their, their driveway and. The code says you're not supposed to do that. So maybe since we have plenty of space, especially in nine, what's the big parking lot? Nine, nine E, especially over way towards the other side, away from the restaurants, we could designate a row or two where people like that who have a you know plumber business or a landscaping business, whatever it is, yeah. can have a place to park overnight and get it out of their driveways. It doesn't bother their neighbors. We're not theoretically ignoring our own rules about and forcing a policeman to go over because he got a call from a neighbor who's pissed off about a plumber's truck in the driveway. So that was at least the theory on why I suggested we do this. Um, I think we got to deal with the, the reality. So if I'm, you know, Joe Smith plumber, I probably have a business. And this draft, again, it's just a draft. Um, I think we have to address that because it's written that any resident can get a permit. But if I have, you know. Joe Smith, Joe Smith Inc. Plumbers business. It's not me personally. It's a business. So I think we have to address how you could get the permit to that person. They'd have to come in. And I think we'll have to create something. They show ownership of the company or at least the majority. Um, so that's one point. I think another point is we got to figure out how to uh, limit how many people, how many trucks someone could do. I mean, I, if I have a really big business with 10, 20, 30, 40 vehicles. I don't think that's what we envisioned. It was sort of the, in my head, the onesie, twosie kind of situation. And so I think we need to kind of build in some sort of limitations on how many of these parking permits a business or a person with a business could get. Um, I think we had to have, should have that language about there's no repairing vehicles, there's no uh, um, you know loading and unloading them there. Um, it's really more of a, get it out of your driveway, park overnight kind of solution, hopefully. Um, what else? Um, and I don't know if we want to have a, some sort of fee. I mean, we charge people 150 bucks for train station. I don't know if this should be 200 or 250 a year. I don't, I don't know, but that's some of my thoughts. All right, anyone have anything further to say on that topic? I think we should consider also the size of the road. We don't want to we want to limit the size of the vehicles too, right? Because what I'm worried about is if you have commercial vehicles, that could be one axle, two axles, or whatever. Yeah, it says 20 feet in the draft. Okay. I don't know if that's how many axles that is. I'd just like to point out the present time, uh, one of our neighbors is now parking. I think I counted four of their vehicles uh, in, uh, in 90. So I think Brian makes a good point. I think there has to be a limit on, on how many should be parked. And, and I also agree with Brian with regard to the fee. I think we have to have a fee that's reasonable, uh, not, not excessive, but reasonable. One fee or a fee for every vehicle? Oh, a fee for every vehicle. Every vehicle? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, right, this is Trustee Bolbrook, because uh, I know that when people on the Zoom, they say, could you please identify yourselves when we speak, so maybe we can remember to do that. Um, one of the things I think which would make sense if we were talking about a fee, uh, the fee that I think would just make common sense is the exact same fee that we charge in front of I think that uh, totally makes sense because that's basically using the same type of uh, 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 usage and uh, we would clean the parking lots and everything else. So I think, in I think line, you're right. it also doesn't limit people to a specific spot. Uh, they would basically have a designated area. So I think that that fee would just simply be make common sense to use it throughout the village. So what is that fee again? Is it two fifty or seven? I think it's is it two seventy five a year? Two seventy five. Two seventy five a year, correct? Yeah, two seventy five a year. Right. The only thing that I would say is if, if we could kind of look at where we'll designate those spots to be, because you, I mean. Backs up to the right away from the Long Island Railroad over there, but there's homes with their backyards right there as well. 
So I'd want, I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, affect those people. So looking at where we place those vehicles, I think is pretty important there too. Good Can we bring the map up on the screen? Is that possible? Why don't we wait to the hearing, right? Yeah, yeah. we right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Can we wait to the hearing to set the, the designated area, Pete? Or do we have to do it now? No, uh, I don't know. Uh, the draft local law could, for example, as was done with the pilot program, uh, authorize the commissioner of police or public works to designate an area and set it aside. That's one method. Mm -hmm. Or you could identify it by specific roads, but it would have to be in the local law uh, one way or the other prior to the public hearing. I did note, by the way, that you'll see in the draft local law there is a reference to section 1-12 of the code for the penalty for violation. And that penalty, I just pulled up the code, is a fine of up to $1,500, or five days in jail. Uh, but that penalty is set by the Village Justice after a ticket is issued. The board has the power to set a specific uh, fee or fine uh, in the local law. But as it currently reads, it would simply be left up to the Village Judge. Well, that's not true, Peter, because what we're saying is we'd be giving a permit out. No, no, I, I apologize. I was referring to the violation of the local law. Oh, the question was asked before. What is the penalty if the law is violated? And in that case, it would be a fine of up to $1,500 as set by the village judge. But you can, in the alternative, set a specific violation fee. Or set a, or just set a minimum, right? Or a minimum. All right, so I think we'll have to do a revision of this and get another version out there. All right, so then we would uh, move on to, uh, I think that I can ask for um, a motion to approve the consent calendar. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to take something off the consent calendar. Yeah. Uh, I want to take off number 13, I think it is. Uh, sorry, number 12. Uh, I think we need a little discussion on uh, uh, the uh, permits. Yeah. Number 12. Number 12. Well, isn't, isn't, there, isn't there just a question about one of them? Yes, there is, and I think that we have to discuss that one. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Was there someone with another number? Karen, number 12. Number 12? No, it's the same number. No. All right. Karen just did ask me what number. Oh, okay. All right, so now, um, did we, we have to, we're finished with that. Well, we're just before everything else other than 12. Right, right. okay. We have a motion. Right. Right. Okay. I'll move the consent, this is Delaney, I'll move the consent calendar with the exception of number 12. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll second it. Trustee seconds, and all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. That uh, is a, a yeah. success. Um, now we are going to go to uh, 12. Uh, we are going to, um, we're going to approve it for everything except 12? Well, no, they are. Except Rebel? We're just going to discuss 12. We're just going to discuss 12 now. Okay, are, go ahead. Yeah, this is John Delaney. Uh, I have a problem with a year. Uh, I would like to see it for uh, six months, which is always renewable. Uh, I think that hopefully, if everything runs smoothly, maybe by six months we will be out of the pandemic and we can get back to some normal activities. That's my first concern. My second concern is I have a problem with regard to Rebel. Uh, both the police and the fire uh, department have indicated, and DPW, DPW has also a concern with Rebel. And, and the building department. So this built, so I would not approve it with regard to Rebel. Um, if Rebel makes whatever changes DPW building, fire, and police want done, they can come back and ask for it. But I, I, I think they need to do that pretty promptly or we'll, or we'll have to take it down. Uh, 
do you one better. Okay. You can improve. You, Wait. I, I said I, you could probably do one better and just say you could improve 12 with the stipulation that Rebel has to make the changes as directed. Um, I have like safety and, and build it. I have a concern with that. Use a microphone. Yeah. Use a microphone. Well, I think we should hear what the concerns are from the different departments. Yes. Uh, uh, trustee Delaney, I don't think the police department have that issue. Okay. Well, my concern with doing it that way, Louis, is I would prefer not to approve it and have them come back because if we just let it slide like that, and, and I think Trustee D Dorney has a point. Let's hear what. Uh, Building and DPW and fire, the concerns are. And I'll hand it to the building department to start. Thanks, Trustee Delaney. Uh, Giuseppe Giannello, building department superintendent. Um, I just want to go over our main concerns. We actually had inspectors walk through all the tents, um, and the main concern was with Rebel. Um, there's various concerns with that. Um, the obstructions, um, as far as the right of way. The obstructions as far as the path of travel, as far as the sidewalks, uh, pedestrians walking and trying to get into uh, other you know, uh, tenancies, the gym, uh, the restaurants, um, walking, just just travel, the ordinary day-to-day -day travel uh, is, is, is a hazard. Um, it's going to set a liability on the, uh, on the village and it's basically a, a life and safety concern of the building department. To, to you know question um, the location itself um, as far as the location of where the actual tent is it obstructs the the actual right away for any for fire for police for anything that's going to um, exit on Stewart or into the parking lot area um, you know DPW can speak on as far as uh, how many times you've been there as far as the drainage system and the water that's you know basically a hazard uh, for numerous reasons as far as people walking um, you know, obstructing the curb area. Uh, we worked at it, we actually did a, a site walk and we had, uh, they constructed a platform uh, and raised to curb level, um, a whole platform which basically diverts the water uh, and, and ponding area um, you know, by the tent. So basically the water is just capsulated and trapped into that area and we had uh, numerous uh, you know, DPW trucks Go back out the um, you know, we'll, uh, use the, the trucks to um, suck up all the water um, there. So uh, Dominic and and, and um, the Ralph can speak on that behalf. But there's there's main concerns that we really need to walk to address. Do, can we, can do, we, do, we have, do we have pictures that we can see of the, of the area? Uh, so no, there no, weren't pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Maybe we can put it on the board. Yeah. 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 Can I can I just ask a question? So, what's the remediation? How how do you bring it to be an acceptable situation as, as it relates to rebel? Do you want them to move the, the tent they have, or is it just make a different size? Or? Well, sorry, I think you get your number. I can see the right Give us a second, Dennis. Let's let us continue, and then you can speak. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, basically, the size of the tent. This one option can be reducing the size of the tent off the curb line, so we don't have this um, trap of water that's causing major problems. And Dominic and, and Ralph can speak on that matter. Uh, and also the obstructions of the uh, direct path of travel, um, the wires that uh, are there or anything like that. Any any obstructions. It's a life and safety issue of village residents and pedestrians. So we just have to be careful on, on that matter. Um, and the second thing is basically just changing location. Let us designate another area, possibly in the parking lot area, away, and just keeping the, the roadway open for everybody to get to get in there. Um, unless they come up with something else, uh, those are my two recommendations. Is that working? I'm totally done again. No, no. Go ahead. You guys, you speak. Go. Go. Yeah, I Dominic Stanko, DPW. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dominic Stanko, DPW. Yeah, we've, uh, us in DPW, we've been out there numerous times. I did meet with James, the owner of Revel, several times. He was accommodating on a few times we went met out there. Uh, he was trying to work with us and trying to 
tried to do with the village regulations and what we're, we're looking to do to keep everything afloat. We were trying to work together. Uh, there was an air, uh, there was a time and period where we had the first rainstorm after that thing was erected. Uh, the thing was started to be erected before any of us approved the size of that that structure. Uh, we had water backing up the first rainstorm. We had a two-inch rainstorm. Uh, getting numerous calls from building uh, from building merchants as well as uh, the news uh, paint bar as well as the bank. That water was overflowing over the curb line into their stores. We had to send an inductor truck there, that's a pump truck that goes down into a manhole. There's an adjacent manhole, say about 15 feet off that structure that we went and pumped out, to, took care of that issue with the rain. And once we pumped that out, we noticed that there was an obstruction there where it was totally sealed off from curb to curb and adjacent. So there was no way for the water to flow. Water in that parking lot, the profile of that parking lot, goes from east to west and down south, down Kellum Place. We have several other basin inlets along that curb line, and everything's supposed to flow down towards Stewart Avenue. Right now, it flows, the profile of that road goes from east to west, and it gets trapped along that curb with that one leaching basin that's there that doesn't collect all that water in that main parking lot. Because even coming around, around that dumpster enclosure, if you look at the dumpster enclosure, that, that structure abuts that and water sits behind there, and it rises as well during the rainstorm. I did send, uh, send out some pictures earlier this week. I do have numerous other pictures that we have. We've been out there several times pumping that out. I've been out there with Giuseppe a few times. He saw what was out there. Uh, they did try to open up that area. They did open up to try to make flow to, to that one basin. Uh, when they opened that area, they did put a floating floor in there, which we did notice. I did go out there with the highway supervisor we opened up the hatch over there, and then there was only water trickling in that basin. Water wasn't totally flowing. Then we went on the other side of that tent, figured if it's not getting to that basin, maybe it's going to flow to the other end of that tent, where it should flow going to Stewart Avenue. And unfortunately, there was no water flowing, as you can see in pictures that we sent out. So basically, like Giuseppe said, water's being trapped. Uh, we've been out there three times. We've actually had to get DPW overtime to stay late to pump out there on rainstorms. We were concerned the last snowstorm we just had where it started raining and then snowed back and forth. We had, we had to send crews out there to pump that out prior to the storm so it wouldn't have an issue because we were concerned of icing up, pedestrians falling. Like Giuseppe said, there's only <coughs> one way for pedestrians to go along that sidewalk. Yeah, and uh, you should have other means because you got the gym there and so forth and that's a heavy walk, walk uh, traveled area that, that uh, you know, we can't have major liability because it will ice up. I just want to mention one of the concern, um, and as per the village clerk, um, we do a, we prove the tent, not the platform. This platform is an obstruction, and I believe that should be removed. Thomas Fisco, Chief of the Bronx and Fire Department. Uh, similar concerns, the platform, the rock garden that's there, it's a semi-permanent uh, structure. If we ever had to move that structure to gain access with fire apparatus, could not move it. We have no access to Column Lane, which is that roadway that runs behind uh, Rental. We have no access to the um, road stores from the rear. We have it from the front, but we have no access from the rear. Plus, we also use that roadway to access 365 Stewart Avenue, which is an apartment building on the west side of the building. So we can't put a ladder truck in there. And also, the tent is so large that there's very little room to get by the sidewalk um, to, to stretch hoses, to bring ladders, whatever tools you need to put out, put out a large you know, fire uh, quickly to, to facilitate bringing up fire. So we have those concerns. Mayor, if I can, this is uh, Trustee Goldberg, I'd just like to make a comment on this item. Mm -hmm. um, I agree uh, with Trustee Delaney's recommendation, and I think that for Waterzilli, Novita, and Caligaros, um, I know that our people have looked at those areas and we have absolutely no issues mm -hmm. with the tents and the structures that they have put up. Where I disagree with Trustee Delaney is he's talking about doing this for six months. I'm sorry. Um, look, with the way that the COVID virus uh, has hit this community and with the way that they have put out um, the vaccines, whatever time schedules they have, you might as well take that and double or triple it because this is taking far longer. And in addition to that, 
I think that these uh, restaurants, when they make the type of commitment that they have, and again, if you look at, I mean, I just actually ate at Waterloo this evening with my wife. The, the work that they have put in there and what they have built along with Novita and even Caligaros, even in the spring and the summer, it, I mean, residents just love it. It's absolutely, they've done, a, they've done a beautiful job. So to me, these restaurants who have made such investments and have such additional cost and less clients, they have to know that whatever investments they make, that they're going to be there for the entire year. So I would just ask my fellow trustees that we should go for the entire year, not six months. Not to say that we can't renew it, but if you're running a restaurant, you need to know that you have the entire year and whatever investments you make, you're trying to project. And these restaurants and these businesses are trying to survive in this environment. So I would just say that I would recommend the three, Waterzumi, Navita, and Caligaros, recommended for the year. And then my suggestion would be is that I think that our next meeting is on February 4th, my suggestion would be is that I think that Rebel needs to sit with the village um, uh, uh, people and then try to decide if they can resolve the issues. If they can't resolve the issues, then let's, as uh, Giuseppe has suggested, then let's sit there and let's figure out an alternative of what, what we can do. But again, I wouldn't hold up the approval on the other three restaurants if we just have an issue with one. That's my suggestion. Trustee, may I offer just an alternative? I'm not recommending it, but very offering the alternative that you could authorize the mayor to execute the rebel agreement at such time as same as recommended by the several department heads. That's another choice which you may wish to consider. And then I would also note for the benefit of the trustees that uh, even when the agreements are authorized, they are terminable at will by the village at any time. So that the length of time and considering how long you want to run it, you should also just keep in mind that you can terminate it at any time for any reason. Thank you. And again, I understand we can terminate at any time, but the only thing that I would say is, is that I think that if we're approving the three of them here in a board meeting, we should then approve the fourth in a board meeting. I think just to be consistent with the other three restaurants, that's just my opinion, you know, not to take anything away from the mayor's position. This is Trustee Bolivar. This is Trustee, uh, Trustee Manuda. The only thing that I, you know, that, that I feel is, um, you know, that gives me problems about that is, it could slow Rebel down, and if, if it's a matter of you guys going on and say it's this big, it's that big, move it over there, move it over there, he might say, I'll get it done Monday. And if he has to come back to the board, it's going to take him another month, he loses a month of sales with his hands in his pockets, that kind of stinks, you know what I mean? So, look, he's not going to throw anything up. If, we, if he satisfies these guys, he gets to proceed. If not, he doesn't get to go. You but how long has he At least it'll be quick for him. I don't how long, has, how sorry, long yeah. has the uh, owner, no, manager of Rebel, known about you, your <laughs> stipulations, your feelings that you can't accept the, these dimensions of, of the business? Well, why, why don't we, Shouldn't he be working on this feverishly? Why don't we ask if he's on, or Mr. Donnelly, I think, is representing him here. Let's hear from them. Okay. That side. I'd, I'd love to be able to do that. All right, right there. Go ahead. Okay, just to uh, Jim Ducasse, who owns Rebel, uh, on 628, he applied with, to the village for a building permit for his outside deck, patio, and landscaping, which was approved. On 10 2, uh, excuse me, 10 12, he applied and received a permit to put up his tent, which included the drawing as to where it was and its size. On 10 15, he applied and received an electrical permit. To install lighting, heating, four electric heaters, and two emergency exit signs within his tent, which was uh, applied for and received. On 1123, at the request of Dominic Stanko, he increased the opening from 4 to 12 inches underneath the tent flaps along the curbside to allow the water to flow from under the, under the tent. Uh, on 1126, he installed a floating floor, the entire inside of the tent, which would allow the water to flow beneath the floor and into the drain that is also within his tent. On 11-29, he removed two grease barrels from the uh, garbage enclosure and hired a new company and uh, had the enclosure um, grease container, which is sealed on wheels and prevents any spillage. On 1-4, he hired a professional company to decrease 
and power wash the entire garbage uh, enclosure, which he is only one of the people who uses it. He's into this tent for $51,400. Um, the, the, the water, the issue is the, is, the, is the drain. Why does the drain overflow when it rains? Now, the big puddle that, that exists, it is what makes people walk around the, the, the sidewalk. The sidewalk is clear uh, in front of this restaurant. So you can walk from TD Bank all the way down to the to Stewart Avenue on the sidewalk on a, on a truck. Um, as far as the fire department is concerned, everybody signed off on this in the summer. There are no hydrants back there. Um, and I guess um, in terms of snow, there's no reason to plow it if it's closed. And secondly, secondly, as Commissioner Jackson spoke about at the very beginning of the meeting about residents and businesses have to shovel their own sidewalks, which they're certainly responsible for. So I think this guy has done every single thing the village has asked him to do. And I think it would be a shame not, not to include him in this approval because I, he'll certainly work with the village, but to move his tent is, is an expense that is, is, is an enormous stand. So I'm I happy to answer any questions, but that's what I would say. Uh, Jay, uh, is this, okay. Yeah, how you doing? This is Dominic Sanko again. Yes, you are correct. He did open up that uh, that opening along the curb line to about 12 inches. But to know a week later, he put in that floor and he did not get any approvals on that. Now, that floor in there is an obstruction. That's a major obstruction there, and we do have issues there. And to your and to your uh, question about uh, drainage, that why there's a flood there. Before we even paved that lot, we didn't have any major flooding issues. And what it is, is he, he is blocking the other drainage structures. Yes, he did put that floor in, there is an opening there, but water is really not getting to that drain. We do have pictures. We were out there on a rainy day when we had an inch and a half of rain, and we took pictures. And we put, took pictures inside that tent, and we opened up that hatch to see if water was flowing to that drain, and it wasn't. And then we looked on the other side of that tent, and water was now flowing down Kelvin Place to Stewart, where the other drains are. That's the problem we have here, Dennis. And he also has a sealed off around the whole tent where he put that, uh, that sealant that everybody puts around windows and doors to, uh, so water doesn't go underneath the railroad type uh, planters. I mean, you need ways for water to flow. And to get to the uh, snow, snow removal part, yes, we have to snow, because the fire department or the police department has an issue that they have to get down there. And we have a 12 inch snowstorm and it's not plowed. We have major issues there. This is Trustee Bolberg, if I can make a comment. Uh, obviously, I appreciate, Dennis, the information that you've given us, because obviously, I think what you've shown is a track record and dates and times when the owner has made various changes. But my question, very simply, Chief uh, Strisco, if you could get a microphone, I have a question for you. And this is very simple. The way that you describe the situation that's at Rebel right now, is it a safety concern? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, say that a little louder? Yes, it is. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of the discussion. So what ends up happening is, I appreciate everything that the owner has done. I think that we should absolutely work with the owner because I think that as Dennis has shown, he's definitely willing to do anything or many things that have been requested of him. But if we have a safety issue, we have apartments that are there, we have other restaurants, if, the, if, if our a fire com uh, uh, um, um, a commissioner is sitting there and saying to us, if our chief is telling us that this is a safety issue, as far as I'm concerned, as a trustee, that's the end of the discussion. Let's resolve the safety issue. We have a trustee meeting on February 4th. Let's the village and the chief work with Revel, and let's figure out what we have to do in order to move forward. That's just my opinion. So, approval. I, I guess, uh, to me, this, I think we need to look at each problem and see if it's solvable. If we, we voted, and, and this restaurant spent a lot of money, based on that vote, to let them put a tent and close that driveway. 
It's not a road, it's a driveway. Okay, so are we backtracking on that? Is that what we're doing? Because the only way we're going to satisfy the fire department is if they have full access. So they want the tent gone completely. Is that what this is, we're voting? Because that's not solvable. It's an easy yay or nay. The tent's allowed or not allowed. Well, again, the bottom line is Trustee Dornings is Trustee Bolbrick again. My point is very simple. We have another meeting on February 4th. Let the fire department and DPW and, and the village, including Dominic Stenko, sit there, go there with Giuseppe, and say, here's a situation that we have. Let's figure out what type of resolutions that we have. Regardless of what we approved before, obviously there were many additions from what the first design was done. And again, no disrespect, I think he's probably tried to, to, to give his uh, customers an excellent area. But I think the bottom line is, if we have well, one why area, are we this conversation? if we have an area which is unsafe, yeah. then, then we have to address that. We this just can't is, turn this around. It's very simple. Interesting. Either we're allowing a tent, whether it's 10 feet big or 30 feet big, or not, to close that road. Why are you wasting a month? No, I, I don't think it's that kind of drive, right? It, yeah, it is. It, the chief just agreed. They want that. They would like the road open. Yeah, I know. So, but well, yeah. Mr. Is... Chimanel is saying that you can move it over by and take up some spots. We did it for water too. We, no, no, it wouldn't be next to the restaurant. You gotta look at the geography, no, right? So it would be out in the regular, bigger part of the parking lot. That's what he's advocating. I mean, we're, we're here, this is Giuseppe again, we're here, we're with the village, we're here to work with, with him. So if we come up with a compromise that it's, it's going to help the life and safety of, of the village, so we're not liable, and they're operating their restaurant, we're okay. Okay, so wait, wait. So is, is the board okay with him moving that tent into the larger part of the parking lot? We'll see what we'll they bottom line is, what comes back. Yeah, see what they come back with. Let's see, you're, you're making you know what the hell is going on. Let's see what happens and come back. Yes, right. come back the answer is yes. If, if it's a safety issue, yes, he might have to move the tent. So if we can get people sure. over there to look at what it is. It's very concerning that we're hearing safety issues and safety trumps property. So at life trumps property. So yeah, we have to get over there and see what can be done to salvage the investment this uh, gentleman has made. Exactly. I, I don't see what the issue is. It's also a drainage issue, too. I mean, that's, that's a food major problem as well. There is no. So you, gotta look at the, you have to look at the drainage issue as yeah. well. There's, there's many, listen, guys, let's be honest, right? This is a trustee in there. We approved all these things. The COVID was just happening. We wanted to give everybody a fighting chance here to go to a restaurant. Okay. We made some moves, we put some tents up, some work better than others. Obviously, if this, this seems to be maybe the worst case scenario where there was drainage issues and there's, there's, there's access issues and a couple other things. Okay. As things got a little bit more, um, you know, uh, the weather changed and things happened, then it sounds like he's caulking things, to keep maybe air and water out, and it's causing different effects. So let's figure out what the issues are. Let's come back in a nice, normal way. Let's not just say, you want to do that or you want to do this. I don't know what we have to do yet, guys. I'm asking you guys to go figure it out and come back to us so that Revel is happy and the town is happy. I think that's what we all agree, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I respectfully remind the board also that you must take into consideration the SLA requirements. For example, that the extended premises have to be line of sight from the uh, alcohol service. So that should also be part of the equation. I'm sure it will be with these. Which is why I think the tent is where it is. It had to be within the guideline, within the parameters of its building, which was measured from the back of its building. So if he's in the parking lot, he's in violation. Okay. Okay. Mayor, right, so I would move. Let's turn it okay, I would move to. I would move, I would move article level 12. Level of, and approve the others. And then, the when would you plan to be meeting with this gentleman? Quickly? This week. This week, Mayor. We'll make range is, to meet It's with very you. hard for me to approve anything if the um, Chief Briscoe tells me that he cannot get in there and feel a little farther. Okay? Just, just so you know, we approved this back on in June, the same closure of the road. Dennis, I, Dennis I, understand, I understand we approved it, but Trustee Minuta is Trustee Boulevard. Trustee Minuta said exactly the same thing. Look, what we did was we, we, we've never faced this COVID situation. None of us have. So what we're doing is we're trying to do everything that we can, just like we extended 
the 7th Street closure, just like we did or everything else. So all we're saying is, as a board, is listen, we've done all these different things. Obviously, you have a person here that's made an investment and he's looked at, and, and I appreciate you pointing out all the things that he's done. What we need to do is we need to sit there and say, can we, what solutions can we come up with? What choices can we come up with? And let the owner work with DPW and the chief and see to where we can get to a point to where we might have a, a solution. You're going to come back and say, listen, we're going to have two choices. We're going to have two, three choices, A, B, or C. And then the board has to decide what, what gets done. But again, we, we passed all these things with the best right. of intentions. We have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. All right, so. There I'm, is the proposed motion then to authorize you to execute the uh, second extension of the license agreements with the exception of Rebel. Right. Is that the motion right. being discussed? That's the motion. Yeah. We also have to discuss whether it's going to be six months or 12 months. Because I, I, I think we should, can review this after six months to go further. Agreed. So. Agreed. Well, well, what's, what's the issue? What is the, do we not like these things? Do we no. not like people dying outside? No. We like to reestablish order. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to do. Well, that's what we're going to do. We like to reassess the situation in six months. I right, but we've been doing it the whole time. No, I, I know. It's, it's, it's a really time. crazy changing world, and we should probably keep the option to review the situation in six months. We want to, We may want to build more structures in six months. I have no idea. We may want to build tunnels like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 such time as indoor dining restrictions are uh, eliminated, which could be in three months. Uh, you know, all I'm saying is once that once you can have indoor dining at a capacity that lets a guy make a living, then we don't need the the outdoor. So it's a year and or that. I don't. I don't. I'm the one that raised the six months. I don't have a problem going along with the. Uh, Dennis's suggestion, either a year or when indoor dining is again approved. That clearly, that clearly can, that clearly can be done here though. Well, it, 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 not longer than, not longer than a year or. And uh, again, this is Trustee Bolderick. I'll, I'll just give you my opinion. My personal opinion is, is I think that even though I know they did take up parking spaces, I have talked to so many people in the village and they love what these three restaurants have done. They love the outdoor dining. And whether or not COVID is with us or not, to me, I think this is something that they should have for the long term. I think the residents absolutely love sitting out there and dining, uh, both in, in, in all these three places. And these people have spent money and they look fabulous. So that's just my opinion. But if you guys want to do it for six months, I, I agree, but I would do it for the year, but that's my opinion. I, I, let, let's do it for a year or when indoor dining and uh, whatever happens first. Don't you really feel like we should just bring it back in six months no, and look at it? All right, six months. I feel like six six months. Months. Well, I'm not I'm not putting a finish line on it, but I I think it's weird. So many things. Think about a year ago to now. <clears throat> think about how many things have changed and how many times we need to course correct to stay on target. I just think. They might come to us in six months and say we want to do X, Y, Z. I don't know. I just I feel a little bit better with in six months having some way of making changes or refining the, the concept. Believe me, I'm all for it. I I mean I don't love sitting outside. I'll be celebrating the day I get to go inside. I just I'm saying I'm I'm happy to provide what we can and have these guys have a fighting chance. I'm just saying, I think it's healthy for all of us to reassess these things in six months. Trustee Minuto, does the board perhaps wish to consider a one-year extension, but direct the clerk to bring this matter back to the board's agenda in six months? I'm fine with that, just as long as we can. No, i yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm good, good with that. that. Okay. okay. Is the motion then to uh, renew the extensions uh, of the uh, various restaurants with the exception of Rebel for a period of one year, but to direct the clerk to bring the matter back to the board's agenda in six months. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. That's fine. And uh, with me. Trust, I'm good with that. Trustee Pinos right. and and Trustee Delaney. I'll and move. and all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passed unanimously. All right. We'll finish the goal with that. Good job, All right. Now.
Can we go to citizens' comments on non-agenda items? Remember that you have four minutes to speak. Uh, do we have someone who would like to come forth and speak? Yes, I would, Leslie Walter. Just uh, following up from last month's meeting and the letter that I sent to the Board of Trustees about uh, if there any progress in negotiating with National Grid to re-divert the gas main from Arthur Street away from Arthur Street. Yeah, you know, I did read all the material, and uh, frankly, I'd have to speak to a couple of people about it. It takes time. I was going to give you a call and say that. Did you want to speak? Oh, Ralph, go ahead, Ralph. So this is Ralph Squaws, the village administrator. So since the last meeting, we, we reached out immediately uh, to National Grid, myself, uh, Trustee High and Trustee Delaney, specifically on behalf of the entire board. We had discussions with them. We, we let them know of our concerns, not only that we've been voicing for the last couple of years, but now voiced by residents like yourself. They are uh, looking at it. Uh, we also have our ghost attorney doing some research for us uh, related to deeds, going back to the 30s and 40s. So uh, we don't have an answer for you tonight, but we are in earnest uh, pushing them to evaluate uh, away from that uh, right of way to a more westerly bound right of way. So we, we, I can't report definite progress tonight, but I can tell you that they are making the effort and we are making the effort on our side. I really appreciate that, uh, trustees and, and Mr. Swasey. Um, it is a concern, and I, and I really appreciate you giving me the time and reading my letter. And uh, you know, just to reiterate, I commute back and forth between Garden City and the North Shore every day, and I'm, I don't know if you've seen it, but there are you know, 15 foot stockade excavation reinforcements, cryo igloos, 24/7. And those are on a four-lane, you know, two-way each way road. It's really basically a very busy commercial road, and we're a two-lane, you know, one lane each way, quiet residential street, and that's what really gives us pause. You know, we're really, really have a lot of anxiety about our property values, the the uh, the age of the street, you know, with the houses from the early 20th century. So I know you know all our concerns, and I really appreciate you taking them into consideration. Well, we, so, thank we, you for your efforts. We have, and, and they are willing to listen and look into it. So, I think okay. we're in a, a pretty good place right now. We'll see what they come back with. But they, they are listening to us, they hear us, and they're going to try and work with us. Okay, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, Dennis. Dennis Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to mention one thing about um, the discussion you had earlier about uh, parking uh, like a plumber's truck or whatever in 90. Uh, I would like to alert the village to the fact that since um, the village started issuing permits to the residents in uh, 7N, you know, Hilton Hall and the other places there, we have a major problem with keeping that lot clean because those cars never move. And the street sweepers can't get in there, and even if they go on Sunday mornings, which they used to early, those cars are all still parked there. If you go along the fence line, um, starting at the, uh, the supermarket and going toward the Hilton Hall, along that fence line is disgusting. And we need somebody with a picker to go along there and pick up the pay, everything gets pushed there. And um, I'm afraid you may end up with the same problem at 9E uh, if you do the parking. It's just something that village should look into. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker. Yes, uh, Walter McKenna. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm 67 Hilton. I had a question regarding the um, the road surfaces, various roads in the village. Um, obviously, Stewart 
and um, some of the other roads off that where they've done the project to open up, say, two feet of the center of the road, uh, and then they've paved it uh, back over with black asphalt. I guess my question is, um, what is the agreement with the municipality to repair the road after they do the work? Now, I know from history that if anybody opens up a road, whether it be a, uh, you know, uh, an orchid or a plumbing contractor to do a, a main line, uh, that they are responsible for that patchwork after it's done. But this is a bit more than patchwork, so I'm curious, is the village having them repave the road, or how is that going to be managed? Because we're not just talking about small uh, corrections. This is, you know, in many areas right now, those asphalt areas have been completely depressed, and now they're uh, almost like trenches. So how, if you could help me understand how that's going to be uh, managed. Um, an example DBW. Yeah, normally with jobs like that, they what they do is they backfill the trenches and they temporarily restore them. You gotta let a settling process happen. You will get uh, ruts, you will get settling. Uh, they do have to come back when we are aware, sometimes residents call us or our highway supervisor will notice that there's areas settling. We'll call the vendor, the contractor, they'll come in and fill in those holes again, make sure everything's flush and safe. And then at a later date, they gotta come back and cut out and put a permanent patch in. And that's a per that'll be a permanent patch that has to be done and sealed off. Uh, but right now, it's a settling process. Anytime they dig a uh, certain depth in the road, uh, they have to let the trenches settle because you can't put a permanent patch in right away because it will, set, it will create ruts and holes. Okay, thank you. So when would you expect them to be coming back to do that? Finalization. And on Stewart Avenue, I think they, they just finished working, I think, right before Christmas. So maybe sometime early spring to do a permanent patch, early to mid spring, depending on the weather. So I would assume as a village we have a list of all the streets that they have to come back on. Yeah. I believe so, yes. Because we have all permits on every, every location where they work. And if you do have any concerns of any locations, you can put it to the village's attention and we will get on the contractor for you. And that's why we get the permits and we get fees and deposits. Uh, deposits are so, so we have them coming. Thank you. Uh, my, my last question is with regard to Stewart Avenue um, from Village Hall um, West to where it be Tilton. Obviously they did the work and they did it very efficiently, by the way. Um, it looks like about two months ago when they finished the work, they drew the lines for arrows and new striping um, and obviously haven't been back. My main concern is the crosswalk in front of the police station because on one side of the road, the south side, there are stripes and on the north side, there are none. So when you're crossing that, people are not seeing the stripes to stop for pedestrians. And the other day, my wife and son almost had a, a terrible accident. My wife went into Village Hall to let them know is uh, who is responsible uh, to come back to paint all that striping. Um, I certainly don't think it's because of cold weather that they can't do it because I've seen them put white stripes on roads when it's much colder. So how can that be uh, kind of expedited? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get in touch with the contractor. We'll see if they can come in and put some temporary striping in. And our village engineer did uh, meet with them uh, about a month ago when they were going to stripe it. That's why you see uh, temporary marks out there. And I know you said it wasn't because of cold weather, but it was. The gentleman that handles all striping in the village, our engineer that's in charge, he did stop them from painting the lines due to the fact that it was cold and it wasn't going to adhere to the pavement. But we will, since this is a concern, we will have uh, some temporary striping installed uh, so we don't have an issue over there. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Next speaker. Hi, it's Judy Courtney, 3 Tree Month Street. I just wanted to, um, I'm sorry, I just wanted to follow up on Walter's question regarding um, the road and pavement, et cetera, especially for um, what you just described as how the patching is handled. I may be wrong, but I have a recollection of um, several years ago, I thought the board passed, um, I'd call it a resolution that said that when any um, road work was done on public roads that the requirement would be for whoever did that road would be to resurface the entire 
surface, not patch it, so that we have these stripes and you know different colors and different kinds of finishes all over the place. Is that still the case, or are these just going to be patches along a particular strip that might have been um, damaged or might have been adjusted as they were doing the work, and then there'll be uh, different kinds of uh, finishes along a particular road, such as Sixth Street? Judy, this, this is John Delaney, and Dominic is sitting next to me. If I get this wrong, I, I believe it is how wide the uh, trench is as to whether or not they have to do the whole street or just a portion of it. To curve to, whether it's curved to curve or just a uh, patch. And under the permit and under the review that we make, it, we de it, it depends upon that as to whether we can make them do the whole uh, curve to curve. So what is, what is the uh, requirement? On something like that, Judy, it's, uh, it's if they're trenching three or four feet off a curb line, not in the middle of the road. If they're trenching three or, 40, or four feet off the curb line, they have to take out the rest of the pavement to the curb, to the curb, and go two feet adjacent on the other side towards the other side. That's what it is, and they have to do that whole strip going down. Uh, if you look at when they did uh, Pine Street, I don't know if you remember when they did the Pine Street water main, yeah. that's what we made them do prior to us going in there to repave the road afterwards. They had to do it, they were three feet off the curb line, they had to come in and do a permanent batch, right to the curb and two feet adjacent into the middle of the road. They did the whole length and stretch, then when we came in and resurfaced the road, they resurfaced the whole road after that. It's not curb, it all depends on the, the size and, and size of the trench and what they plan on doing out there. And if there's bell holes there, if they're putting in uh, uh, utility boxes or manholes. So it's, it's, every, every permit is a, is a, is a different, uh, different animal. That's, that's a good word to say. <laughs> awesome. This is, this is Trustee Donnie. I think, Mr. B, uh, these are state utilities in many cases. We can't force them to do an entire road, correct? We are limited in what we can try to force them to do. Our local laws do require that any entity which opens up the roadway is required to put up both a deposit uh, to cover the cost of repair and repaving and to do that repair and repaving. Uh, the village has taken the position that that includes certain uh, semi-state entities and utilities those utilities have thus far taken the position that they are immune from that local law, but that as a matter of cooperation, they will endeavor to comply. So that issue has not yet been adjudicated uh, for our local laws, uh, and thus far it just has not come to a head. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The next speaker, please. That's it. That's it. Is there anyone else who would care to comment? If so, if so. I like the uh, <laughs> well, that's Trustee Delaney. That's Trustee Delaney. How about moving into executive session? Yes, okay, Do great. Matter? Yes, sir. I have a motion to adjourn this meeting so that this board can be used to seek the advice of counsel regarding certain uh, litigation and uh, agreements and real estate. May I have a person to it. move that? Trustee Delaney moves that. And second is with Trustee Venuto and everyone. In favor? In favor? Okay, and that's right. a success. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you.